on, you know. So, yeah, and like windy today, you watch it, it really it holds up. Well. Right time, so I'm freezing in it. Mm. I'm loving it. But when I go on holiday, I'm mm. freezing. <laughs> Keep some of these. Right, folks, I'm at Camp Beagle, Beagle at the moment. It's in uh, Nottingham. Is that the correct? Oh, that's Huntingdon. Huntingdon. Huntingdon, yeah, that's yeah. it. See, I, I even get get it wrong, like, do you mean? Uh, yeah, I'm here today. With, it's regarding the beagles, which are being farmed here, puppies, uh, for science, basically. That's what it's... Uh, but it's the cruelty of the animals that I'm, I'm worried about, folks. Now... I have a gentleman here, your full name, well, John, John Curtin. You've probably seen John on my uh, group uh, speaking on his lives and that. So I've come up here today to interview John, folks. Uh, so, uh, first of all, can we have the history of the camp, just for my viewers, to, just it's, a background? History of the camp, we've actually, it's extraordinary, really. We've been here, as in 24-7, presence, for 18 months. Um, so we're the longest running animal rights camp there's ever been anywhere in the world. And even in this country, as far as protest camps, we're getting there now. Green and Common lasted for many years. That was a, a, a camp outside the base where they had American cruise missiles. And there have been lots of other protests done, but 18 months. And so there must be something that's driven us to spend 18 months on the side of this road, determined, despite all the massive police operations against us, the MBR, this company, they've spent um, well over a million pounds in injunctions trying to get rid of us, but we're still here. Come hail, sunshine, snow. And um, the history of the camp is, it came spontaneously, really. I would never, if you'd have asked me 18 months ago, are you willing to, or do you want to, or are you prepared to spend 18 months on the side of the road? I'd have, I'd have said, no way, I ain't doing that. But it just happened all organically. It came from the fact that there used to be some small demos here. This place, there's a history with this place. I went to prison 30 years ago for raiding this place and taking 82 beagles. They classed that as a burglary and got 18 months in prison. So I've known about this place for a long time. But then this, um, two years ago, began these like relatively small demos, like once a month, a few people outside the gates. And because of that, one of those demos, um, someone said right I'm not leaving and I'm staying and I can't leave these dogs here once she's heard the dogs crying down the side and then a friend said to her oh you can't stay on your own so I'll stay and then before you knew it within a few days Camp Eagle was set up so real spontaneous organic thing that's just carried on and now we've got this mantra of like we're not giving up so we don't want to be in it for the long haul and we've already been in 18 months but yeah, hopefully this time next year we won't be here well lots of admiration for what you actually uh, you've accomplished so far because I've seen a bit of the camp I will go around a bit later as you can see folks they they have they have got a nice tent here they've got heat in uh, but it does cost them money like for to keep this going like folks do you mean at the end of the day yeah we're a small uh, grassroots organization yeah, but that's it we don't if you look at our post we don't ask for money yeah i don't blame you some I don't. some campaign groups out there they've got staff they've got overhead mm. they've got quarters this is a small simple grassroots thing but you can see from over there we've got loads of technical equipment like the drone and all the battery charging stuff and solar panels but we're kept alive by kindness for sure you know? yeah definitely Good. uh I, i'm I want to go through what those animals actually go through while they're at this farm and then I want to talk about what those animals actually go through when they get to the lab. Yeah, because when I came and I don't, really until I'd spent this much time here and studied a place where they're breeding them like this. Like I said, I've got a history with it. I've been inside here before. But when I came 18 months ago, the strong story in my head was like, is what, all, all about what happens to the dogs after they leave here which will come to in the laboratory i never really used to give it too much thought of like it's actually really really bad what happens in these breeders but 18 months and i still get shocked the first time i discovered that they leave this place like this is a sunday afternoon now i don't know what time it is but two o'clock three o'clock something like that three o'clock uh, 
when we first came and you start to actually monitor the, the comings and goings of the staff and then on the weekend they'd leave that the last car would go at half past 11 before noon and there's like a capacity of up to someone be there uh, that's the support folks yeah we got lots of support uh we get loads of support um what was i saying then you're, you're on about the first time you came. Ah, the no, first the time, time, the first time I found out about the workers, yeah. and you're like, hang on, that, that, that's the only security left on site. That can't be right. Mm. Even however substandard they are, you know, if, if you, I've worked in loads of dog places around the world, I've worked with dogs in Sri Lanka and Jamaica, up and down, and I've worked in loads of dog places. And you don't shut the door at noon and then open the door back again at eight o'clock and have a look. You know what I mean? You, you got to be, have some skeleton stuff, even in the vets, if you're going to have five animals, they'll have someone overnight. Britain's biggest puppy factory, now as we're speaking, there's no one on site there now. Oh. So there's an army of security guards, there's two guard dog teams with guard dogs, there's, a, there's four or five security guards, but there's no one on site now that will be able to deal with any form of emergency. There's dog, it's a, they breed dogs here, so they go into what happens to them, they get bred inside the cage, they live inside the cage, and they don't see the daylight, unless... They get taken out of a trolley between one building and another. It's the only time they'll ever glimpse the daylight. There's that saying like that, you know, oh, it's normally meant to be an ill treatment. They treat them like dogs. They get treated like dogs. These dogs don't even get treated like dogs, you know. They are treated as objects. And that's what they are for these companies. They're objects in the, the money-making racket that Big Pharma and the chemical companies have run for 100 years under this. What sort of assumption is it? They experiment on a dog and a mouse and a rat is an accurate way to predict what's going to happen to human beings. That's utter nonsense, isn't it? We all know that common sense tells us that that's nonsense. When you're sick, or say if you had children, would you take your child to a mouse specialist or a dog specialist when it comes to their, their safety? Of course you wouldn't. And that's what the chemical companies for 100 years have expected us to believe, but all the stuff they spread on the fields, etc. It's okay, everyone's safe, we've tested it. It's a nonsense. So, the, not so these, these dogs don't get no... Uh exercise at all then no they get no exercise there's no outside runs there's no runs to go into so in forms of exercise they get exercise which which where hidden uh, small cameras were put inside the air vents uh earlier this year one camera say for example was in there for three minutes um and in that three minutes the entirety there's a young puppy and so it's exercise it's this stereotypical neurotic pacing you know like the yeah and it takes a lot to crush animals like that. And they're, they're already crushed as puppies. And the beagle, the reason they're used by the industry is because um, there, there's footage of up the road there from Huntington. There's one dog and it has nine blood samples taken every day from it, you know. And the dog resists like your dog would. And the, and the, but the beagle don't bite. And in this particular case, you see this man deliver a right hook to the face of this dog. It's on film, you know, swearing Shit. at it, going, I'm getting angry, you But if you tried that with one of these dogs, They'd bite your hand off, wouldn't they? They'd bite you, they'd struggle. They wouldn't just struggle, they'd be biting, but the beagle is bred for their temperament. But another tragedy of that is that the beagle just happens to be one of the most active minds in the bloody universe. Their minds don't turn off, they're, they're bred as hunting dogs, and the amount of stimulation, ask a beagle owner. And they can be a bit of a knot, they're high maintenance, a beagle, you know, to have one at home, because they're like, dun, 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 dun. they don't stop these dogs. I've got nothing. And this is before they go to the laboratory. So I'm disgusted at the conditions in there. So the, the light... Just that alone. Just, just yeah. leave that alone. Hang on. It's Britain's biggest dog factory and there is no one on site as we speak now. If there was a fire, a dog gets his leg caught in a uh, one of the bar, the big dog fight, dogs give him birth. There is nobody on site and there won't be until 8 o'clock tomorrow morning. And then the 18 months we've been here, how many vet call outs has there been at night time? Not, not, not five. One or two. Yeah, one or two. There's no money in it, then, is it? If, if, if they want to look after the dog properly, doing. If, if there's a problem with the dog, they are not going to waste money. They're just going to let, because they can just breed another one. Mm. How many puppies are actually in this farm? We don't. Everything about this whole industry will always be a secret, because I can't tell you. Unless people have been in there yesterday counting them, there are no official figures to know. We don't know. It's got a capacity of up to two thousand. So, they're the main they are the, the main beagle breeders for laboratories in this country in fact the only one the only privately and how many beagles do they release from here every week uh before the camp there used to be a, at least one van a week used to live here now it, it, 
it's hard to build up patterns, but I suppose the average pattern would be once a fortnight, two or three van loads, yeah. so like 40, 50 vehicles. Oh, that's but what they wanted terrible. to do was operate in secrecy, like as if they were coming up here to pick up a sack of potatoes and leave. But ever since the company net, every single day, we 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 make sure our presence is known. Good. We've made them notorious now throughout the world, infamous, NBR. People know about it. Yeah. And uh, what what happens when they actually get to the labs? Because obviously they pe people are going to be shocked about the, mm -hmm. the beagle far, puppy farm itself yeah but what actually happens what they're actually breeded for uh remember and but so we have to deal with the secrecy you really have to I, I, i'd be if i wanted to i i can i can give you a rough idea what happens but in terms of actually finding out what oh happens God. cheers for going now all right nice to see you. all right bye. Bye, bye. bye that's a nice guy he just turned yeah. up there's this thing with the banner <laughs> yeah that's good um the secrecy is incredible. There's more secrecy to do with animal experiments than any other industry, than, than the military, than, than the nuclear power or something. You know, like, you can't find anything out. It's completely... The Home Office deals with this place. The Home Office is in charge of this place. Hang on, the Home Office, they deal with police, security, terrorism. What's the Home Office got to do with dog breeding? It's them. It's them that ordered the two dogs that were recently released, which we'll come to, to go back there. The Home Office... It regulates this place. There's no vets in the home office, no animal specialist. It's secrecy, secrecy, secrecy. Why so much secrecy? Hmm? Well, we so know, we know that's big money. I can't tell you, but we know, we, we do know, we, we piece together what roughly what happens. All these beagles, virtually all of them get used to toxicity tests. Yeah. And these things, called, they're called regulatory procedures, animal experimental. And they say that the industry will say we have have to do these tests there are these international regulations which there are and as far as the medicines go we have to do these experiments on animals because in 1968 after thalidomide tragedy mm. that should have been a moment when all the big pharma chemical companies stood up and said we got it wrong sorry everyone we flooded the market with a dangerous drug and then now because they've done their animal experiments like i said the basic idea which they can never get away from it would be much more scientific to, to know if a drug was going to be toxic or not than to flip a coin. That can give you like 50-50 answers. One out of two times you're right. Experiment on a dog might tell you what's going to happen with a person, but it might be the completely the opposite. And they know this. And it, it, but it's what they've done and they don't want to change it. And they've never been, uh, they don't see themselves accountable in any way because of the secrecy. People stop here all the time. I, think, I thought they banned this stuff in this country. No, they haven't, and there's millions of animal experiments. And if it's science, they could for 18 months here. We every single day we, we we come up with these statements. I could tell you roughly what happens in the laboratory. But if it's science, why can't they just destroy us with the truth? You know, with like, hang on, you talk about science. Here's the proof. We can never find out what happens to these dogs. We know they go to the the, the uh, for toxicology testing, which is basically getting a batch of animals given an enormous amount of the product and then seeing the effects of it. And then actually, it's as crude as this, they will then get the, convert the body weight of the mouse to that of a human being, and they will then come up with like um, a calculation of how much of this insecticide or pesticide you can, you can, you can spray on a grape. Uh, it's ridiculous. It's, 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 uh, it's how they've got their product onto the market and enough is enough. So they could destroy us with the science. They don't say a single word. They don't say a single word in their defense. None of their wealthy clients have been up here to defend this place. 18 months we've been saying, this is hell, this is wrong. It's scientifically and morally bankrupt. It's an abomination. The local people don't want it. Who's been there to defend them? No one. And they're not, they don't need defense though. They just need secrecy and people to be quiet. Uh, well, I personally, in this day and age, I don't think you should be using animals as tests in any way. It should never have anyway, because it, it's not a, a right way of doing something. If you're going to cure a human, you shouldn't be using test it, testing on an animal first, because at the end of the day, you should be trying to cure that person. And I think it's totally wrong that are using an animal and being cruel to an animal, breeding them just for that. Mm -hmm. And then it, it, it's like torture to them, because they, like you said, the toxicology, uh, the, the, I'm sure there's other things that go on in these uh, labs, which are a hell of a lot worse than that. 
the undercover, all the undercover filming, it's like yeah, it constantly I've seen some. Up with like it's worse than your nightmare. Yeah. You know? Because imagine there's something about the dissection. Gandhi called it the blackest of all crimes because it's something about deliberate torture. When they go to the laboratory, the people that that will be giving them the sticking the tubes down his dog's throat, they're given a license by the government specifically to cause pain and suffering. They're actually licensed to do it. They're paid to do it. Yeah. And you can imagine what that environment does to people. You know. It's a it's a strange world. Like they're going into a say in the in the dog test. You ask me what happens with all toxicity tests, thirty day tests, sixty day tests, one year tests, where maybe after six months a dog will be in the corner, spasming, vomiting, and they give them more poison, a little bit more, not much more. And then the next day, there's something about that. Deliberate torture has a very corrosive effect to the rest of society, and that's what it is. Right. But society. at the minute we're up to the point of like. We've gone on about these moral issues for decades that this is wrong, like you said. Now coming to the forefront is a scientific argument, and that's the one they're most scared of, actually. You know, they could they with the moral argument, oh yes, it's very unfortunate we have to do this, and we do as limited as we can, but it does save babies' lives. It's becoming ever, ever clearer. It didn't save no baby's lives. The only health they're worried about is the healthy profits of these multinational companies who do these experiments to actually a smoke screen an alibi just to cover the back they ain't science Criminals. And i can say that because it's not open it's not science the science might baffle me and you'll have to shut up eventually okay you're right but the science isn't there to be looked at and they, they so we need that's what we've got a debate in parliament coming up because of our petition Brilliant. on monday I just sent yeah i, I, I want to go before i get on to that i want to get on to uh what happened on the camp just before christmas with Animal Rebellion. Well, not the camp, what happened to this company. Uh, yeah. There's Camp Beagle. Yeah. We're a simple little project. We've like an old fashioned protest camp. We're here to witness these crimes. We, we monitor their activities. We bang it out to the world every day. We don't let people forget what's happening. And the idea was for it to springboard lots of other actions. But what a lot of people have done is write to us and say, why don't you do this? Why don't you do it? Why don't you go and get the dogs up? We're here in broad daylight operating under the cameras if we were to do that today or you know uh, i've done it myself yeah. you know uh, but if we were to do it we, uh, the police know we are we're under the cameras we yeah. stay legal deliberately you yeah. know like tactically and we are but well, we were so delighted when the animal rebellion people came before christmas it was a to call it a christmas present is a massive underestimate it's one of the happiest moments of a long time hallelujah you know because mm. to me people not under, might not understand it I've been doing this for decades. I'm a sort of animal liberation -y, vegan -y person. And to me, and, and I think we still live in, I think we still live in with the Bible. Still, People still believe in the Bible. I don't believe in God. But we've got all these weird, like human supremacy. This idea that, my idea that animals are my brothers and sisters, you know? And that's, it's as simple as that, you know? Mm -hmm. Simple as so that. So the animal re rebellion. That they're... And, and when, so one animal, you know, people not so forget about statistics and me. Yeah. One beagle saved from me. It's like that's it's the complete thing achieved. Everything is done. Yeah. You know what I mean? There is no more work to do in a way because you've it's worth being born for. You know, some animal got saved from being tortured. I, it's, it's the most perfect thing there is. It's absolutely amazing. So how delighted were we with? the 20 that were liberated then two were captured by the police um they never managed to get away they had a little snatch of freedom when they were in the hands of these people but the police yeah. and security and the police have bloody handed them back here we were naive we we we, we did a joint demonstration with the animal rebellion people and it was really interesting to work with them they're fascinating people we blocked the entire cambridge police headquarters off and I, like I said, I've been involved for decades. If I, if I would want to try and attempt to normally block a police headquarters off, you know, you're going to need loads of people and yeah, chaos. That's right. and all that. They were able to do it with a limited amount of people. It's a 50 of us there or something. But they give out this energy. They're really peaceful, you know, real peaceful, full of love. So the way they deal with the police is like, listen, we're just going to block your road off you know but no hard feelings <laughs> we love you and that the police don't know what to do with them they're like oh, can't you. we should be hitting you with a truncheon but you're, you're a bit fluffy <laughs> but it was a, no not just fluffy like they, they, it, was, it was a very impressive energy to be around yeah so, to try and get these two dogs and 
they were still in the hands of the, the police at that time and none of us there really thought the police sent them out and they're back here to this whole hall, but they did. I can't believe they did that. Yeah. They say that the, the, the Home Office told them to do it. At the end, at the end, at the end of the day, Just Animal Rebellion, them. actually getting 18 dogs out of there, it made me so happy when I heard over Christmas. Yeah. yeah. Because I knew that, cause I, I've shared your stuff, like, yeah. and, and I'm thinking, I, I've seen seen them do it before. Uh, somebody yeah. took in animals from here. And, and it does make you happy because you shouldn't be cruel to animals. So Because... I got done for it years ago. I've spoken about the fact of liberating beagles. I've done stalls about it. I've never met anyone yet that actually had a go at me. You've what? You broke in and rescued a puppy from being tortured in the laboratory. That's terrible. No one's ever said that to me. No one's ever really thought that. It's a good thing. Yeah. It's a beautiful thing. Yeah, it is. Definitely when the do dogs are liberated. And look at what happened last time they came. They came, the animal rebellion came. They did a small raid. They rescued five beagles. Yeah, I saw and that, that as well. And they're not balaclavered up, these people. They're, they're young, energy, and they're, 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 they don't consider themselves as criminals, and they don't act like criminals. They have to get the dogs away, which they did. But, and they got away, they drove away. I was here then, and the whole, this street, the whole of the street was full of police while they were at the back getting the dogs out. They could, they, before they even got through the fence, they could hear the police sirens coming, and they still carried on and got the dogs away. Three people then handed themselves to the police station on the Monday morning, and you think, what? Not because they were going to confess anything, they were going to say to the police, right, that was us, you will now arrest us, because we're going to take us to trial, we're going to put this company on trial. Two weeks later, the Crown Prosecution Service announced they wouldn't be uh, going forward with any prosecution, and the official reason they give, with a straight face, was lack of evidence. Yeah, they had three people that said, I did it, I the fence, I smashed the door, I stole the property. Um, property the police have been see what the police do about this time. An animal rebellion have clear openly said, we're coming back, which means I imagine, uh, it means the star later, it means they're coming back to take more dogs. And if, when they come back next time, they, they've got bigger each time. I bet you loads of people are getting on to them, count me in on the next one. but. And I'm not just saying this, because it's actually it's, it's the truth, it's got nothing to do with us. We're Camp Beagle, we're here in the broad daylight doing our legal work. And what Animal Rebellion doing? They argue is also legal, but it's of a different nature. And we didn't know anything about the Animal Rebellion way beforehand. And we really didn't have to know. We yeah. were just delighted as everyone else was. Yeah, of course you were. Same yeah. as being half the country, like. Yeah. yeah but... More than half the country. Yeah, Who definitely. wasn't delighted about it? You can challenge it. Like, if you've ever met anyone in your life, you know there's animal rebellion people, do you know they took those dogs out? I think that's really terrible. <laughs> I'd be really frightened if, if I met someone who actually said that. Oh yeah, I would, I would be scared as well. So you've got a, a protest on this Friday. Uh, could you t no, we haven't. There's a, there's a group called Free the NBR Beagles. Right. Uh, another group, again, they do their own thing. It's good in life to, you know, all this happy puppy, let's all unite and do everything together. Life's not yeah. like that. You get projects, different projects, so free the NBR Beagles. They're of a different nature. They, yeah. We've worked with them a lot before. In, I met with them, I met yeah. them in London. They're arranging the lab called demo. So um, it's not a Camp Beagle event, it's a, but it's a, yeah, there's another event outside the laboratory up the road from here. The horrible, nasty laboratory lab called. And that's on Friday, isn't it? That's this Friday coming, yeah. Yeah. And then we've got one outside Parliament. We've got, a we've got a petition, like I said, the date, January 16th. So we're going to be having a demo as a parliament. So you, are you going down to the parliament, you yourself? We'll have to see, won't we? Oh, Every one of us will. Yeah. Or we'll see, but sometimes people come and stay at the camp, so we might be able to Yeah, go, yeah. yeah. I'll, I'll, I'll see you down there, definitely, because obviously I'm going to do a documentary about all this. But um, So it's one in... And it's not like I've never known of a social movement in my life that's been led by politicians. People go, oh, what's it? what are you going to, you know... You know, there's always someone on a computer or something. But yeah. it's a, I can, it could be genuinely help. Why are you bothering with the politicians? They ain't going to do anything. Do. We'll drag them into Parliament. You know what I mean? They ain't going to lead no debate. I'm going to drag them out. <laughs> no. Uh, politicians don't lead anything, you know? Puppets, mate. Puppets. You know, uh, and what breaks my heart, but that's a, no, let's not go there. <coughs> well, you could talk about in terms of animal experiments, because people will get amnesia. And we're in exactly the same position that I was in when I was in my twenties where we'd had a f over a decade of Thatcherism and all the rest of it. 
Oh, but we're getting on to dangerous ground now, Sam Campbell. But say <coughs> how it is. But it's to do with animal experiments. For let's just but because by looking into animal experiments, you do uncover a, there's a whole dirty thing, there's a dirty pies, and you can't get follow the money trail, and it takes you to the big global multinationals eventually. Um, what I was going to say. Uh, what was I whopping about? The, the, the demo down no, in there. No, people being broken hearted about Thatcher and all the rest of it, yeah. like we are now with this Tory rule. And then having Labour <coughs> as some sort of saviour thing. And everyone look at look what Tony Blair did, for God's sake. Yeah. You know, it's like, oh. I was just talking about that on the way in the car. And I'm not, so, I am not, so, I'm not going down any road. I've got no right no, to don't. tell anyone what no. to do about their vote. I've never voted no. in my life. That's another story. Uh, uh, but. Animal experiment. Tony Blair promised that they'd have a royal commission to vivisection. There's, there's, there's pictures out. I've got the front there outside the gate of Barry Horn, who died on hunger strike over Tony Blair's broken promises. So if Labour do start promising the earth again, people make sure that they bloody follow up on it this time. Because with Tony Blair, what a nightmare that man was. I can't trust a politician anyway. No, no, no. no but we're going through. We've got our competition. You know, and yeah. it's going through Parliament, so we're, we're doing going it the right through way. the motions. We're yeah, because yeah, yeah. it's got to be eventually a, a change in the law. But Camp Beagle isn't focused primarily on that. We we are heading to that, but our camp, we hope, will be the end of MBR Acres. Uh, not our camp, yeah. our, the, the, the campaign, the whole campaign against it. Yeah, definitely. We, we can get rid of MBR because before they change it, they're going to change the law for a while yet, you know? And we're, we're, we're here to do a job. Yeah, it's been... I, I'm just worried about these beagles, like uh, what we can actually do to help them. Like, but obviously your petition is going to help as well. So you basically need people to be standing outside Parliament on That's just a, but no, no, on sixteenth to help. But yeah, but local but local, maybe, local people. We live local in a society people. of like spectacle. All the ah, oh, the sixteenth. We've got a parliamentary to debate. Yeah, and then on the Monday, I and mean, then what, what about the Tuesday yeah. and the Wednesday? That's where the revolution yeah. comes. to keep going. On, yeah. So we've got events coming up. But it's, it's the most important thing is to keep at it. So what other events have you got coming up? Have you got any more of these? Um... We've got one outside the laboratory on February the 25th. We have we've been starting to have some days where we have demos outside the places where these dogs are taken to, the toxicology laboratories. Yeah. February the 25th. So outside Huntingdon Lab Corps, Huntingdon um, um, Lab Corps in Horrogate, or Harrogate, and Sequani in Ledbury. I'll tell you a good one, you know, if you're doing research into these companies, like try and find out who owns MBR Acres. I defy anyone out there, any accountants or financial experts or people that are involved in business, try and actually follow the money trail. It stinks, just uh, from this company alone. We say it's owned by an American multinational, which it, it kind of is, but you try and follow the paperwork, it ends up in Denmark. After about eight stages of this MBR Acres, they end up in Denmark, and that's where Marshall Bio Resources comes into the paperwork. It stinks. I was doing some basic research about another toxicology laboratory, Sequani. Dead simple search anyone can do on this company. You do uh, Google it, or the search engine, put in the name of the company, put in company's house. That'll give you your basic stuff. You go to Sequani, the laboratory start with. Where's its address? Um, um, the um, British Virgin Islands. You know, like, oh yeah, okay. Yeah, That's just hiding, hiding your money, like. Yeah. Yeah, it's a dirty, dirty, secretive world, animal experiments. So we can't have a proper debate about it. You just got my opinion or someone else's opinion. You can't get at it. It's it's got more secrecy than you could ever believe. Yeah, it is definitely. Uh, so you've got the demo. There's a protest. Well, M I've got a protest outside the lab. Lab Corp. Is it you said? Lab Corp. Friday. We call it. Lab Corps. And then you've got uh, Parliament on Monday. Yes, yeah, the but, MBR demo Friday. Yeah. So it's good that a vivisection's back on the menu. Vivisection slid off the menu, actually. You know, it used to be very high in the answer sort of animal rights, animal, and then there was a big clamp down in the early 2000s. And um, basically, uh, that was another Tony Blair trick. Tony Blair met with Big Pharma, actually, and the chemical company in Oxford in a documented meeting and they said to him it was printed in the Guardian or something I can't remember he gave him an ultimatum unless you crack down animal rights people we're going to leave and we're going to I think it's Saudi Arabia or China one of the two 
and what did Tony Blair do? He had a massive crackdown on the rights movement. So for one reason or another, vivisection went off the debate again. But it's certainly back now, and we know at the camp we've played, played our part in our brain up by banging out vivisection stories every single day. Yeah, I've seen some pictures. Uh, I went to your outreach because you had outreaches last year. It was like yeah, 50, 60 all around the country. Like more, there's 74, I think, in one day. Yeah, I th yeah, because yeah. I went to two in one day. I went to go and interview. Wow. Uh, two lots of them. I went to Cardiff. I run up to Caerphilly, and I couldn't make it back for Swansea. I wanted to do three in one day. That's to me. Yeah, I was. I was trying to be greedy because it was only set for four hours. Do you mean it was only uh, like 12 to four okay. or one till four? So I had to run around like a. Right. But I couldn't get to the Swansea one, or I would have done that one as well. Uh, but yeah, so Monday's uh, the, the party's coming up in Parliament. Yeah. We discussed. Week, week on Monday. Week, yeah, week on Monday, week tomorrow, yeah. I think tomorrow there's a debate about snaring, which is good. Mm. Snares are good. Nasty. Horrible, random. I don't I don't like watching the BBC to be honest with you. No, I don't uh, watch any of it, so I would, I'm totally, I haven't got a clue what's on on the news. But what I'm going to do, I'm going to, for, for the minute, I'm going to say, uh, uh, I'll finish the interview here now. I'm going to have a little walk around with yourself, but I won't yeah. be, do, I won't be doing a live. That's just for the filming. Okay. I mean, I, I want to make sure it's Harrow. So I thank you very much for the interview and we'll talk after it. So thanks for watching. Thanks for sharing. And thanks to my admin. I'll, uh, I'll catch you all later. Thanks, folks.